Hello everyone, welcome to Illustrasa. So, uh, it has, you have seen the uh, title of this particular lecture. I have made the similar lecture a uh, few weeks back and uh, I, I think most of you have seen my LinkedIn post or uh, in different other platforms also that unknowingly I have given a uh, wrong information about it which is uh, the application of or you can say uh, when we are using PDL analysis in the structure then should we use the additional moment uh, in the column design so uh, I have given a wrong information and I really apologize to all of you for that uh, in this lecture I am going to correct it I am going to give the actual uh, you can say scenario how we should uh, do it actually and what code meant to say and we will also see how ETABS is actually dealing with it and uh, what we should actually do okay so if you have seen the previous lecture uh, all of you can uh, see that uh, that that lecture is already removed from my channel and this new lecture is going to uh, going to be there so please do correct your uh, you can say if you have seen that that particular lecture please do watch this lecture and uh, justify the correction and also share this lecture so that those who have seen uh, the other other persons those who have seen this video they can also correct themselves and uh, i'm again apologizing for the wrong information that i have uh, shared earlier okay so let's get started so basically the uh, the concept was uh, on this particular uh, statement in the code that uh, if you see in the 39.7 the slender compression members it is written the design of slender compression members shall be based on the forces and moments determined from the analysis of the structure including the effect of deflections on the uh, moments and forces when effect of deflections are not taken into account in the analysis additional moment given in uh, you can say 39.7.1 shall be taken into account in the uh, approximate direction the additional moments are given in this particular lecture so basically when uh, you are considering the local deformation effect or the deflection effect uh, in the analysis forces itself then you may not be considering this uh, but if you are not capable of uh, taking care of the deflection of the member due to the vertical loads in the standard compression member so in that case you have to use this additional moments so here how we can consider take uh, the effect of the vertical uh, load on the deflection of the column so it is basically the pdl analysis right so uh, what i have explained earlier that when you are performing pdl analysis in etap specifically i'm talking about the etap uh, software so uh, in that case this additional moments it did not to be taken okay so this was the wrong statement that i have made in the earlier lecture and uh, why it is wrong that i am going to uh, justify today okay so here first of all what i will do i will jump into the etaps documentation on uh, pdl analysis because every software has the documentation how the software works it is clearly written in this particular uh, documentation okay so uh, if you see here uh, the definition of etabs if uh, sorry a pdl type if you see so basically we have a column uh, suppose we have a column we have the uh, load on it p so and the force suppose uh, lateral force suppose uh, f okay so due to f we got a deflection here right so this is my lateral displacement which is capital d and due to the vertical load on the on the column this on the slender column we are getting a flexural buckling of the column right and due to the flexural buckling of the column we are getting this uh, this kind of uh, you can say uh, curvature and from this initial deflected uh, position we are getting a new deflected position and this displacement this the second time that the displacement we are getting this is denoted by the small delta right so two times we are doing this uh, you can say we are getting the uh, deflection right so that's why it is called second order analysis twice we have to solve it actually right so the effect of p and the delta we are getting twice so this effect we this is called p big delta okay and this effect it is called p small delta so when you say p delta p delta analysis is consisting is 
uh, including these two so whenever you want to get an additional moment due to the p delta effect it should be moment due to the first effect plus moment due to the second effect that will be giving you the actual p delta effect right so now if i uh, go to the first para of this uh, uh, documentation you can see the program has an option to consider p delta effects in the analysis okay it terms we all know that uh, in the in in my uh, previous lecture that is uh, available in the you can say uh, in my channel you can see i have explained how to uh, define the p delta properly right when p delta effects are considered in the analysis the program does a good job of capturing the effect due to the delta deformation which is the big delta deformation showing uh, shown in figure a1 that we have seen right this big delta deformation but it does not typically capture the effect of the small delta deformation unless unless in the model the frame object is broken into multiple elements over its length so if the frame object is not meshed uh, uh properly then in that case that means the column is not meshed in that case it is not uh, typically capable of considering the effect of the p small delta deformation okay so this second curvature it is not capable of taking care if your column is not meshed into several uh, segments okay so considering of the second uh, order p delta effects is generally achieved computing the flexural design okay this is a different thing this is the whole calculation they have given so now now that means if we define p delta and if we do not mesh the column then this small delta effect will not be taking care taken care by etaps okay only this piece big delta will be coming into the picture now if i go to the another part of this uh, you can say a document which is this 3.2 design here you can see so i am talking about uh, according to is456 and etaps okay so here you can see for slender compression members the code recommends the use of second order frame analysis also called p delta analysis which includes the effect of sway deflections on the axial loads and uh, and moments in the frame for adequate rational analysis realistic moment curvature or moment rotation relationship should be used okay this is not required now if you see here uh, the analysis should include the effect of okay this is not required yeah here when using indian uh, is 456 2000 code it is recommended that the user include p delta analysis fine with this option the program can capture the lateral drift effect which we have seen the p big delta that is the global effect and or p delta effect very nicely but program does not capture the local effect p small delta so the flexural buckling phenomena the program is not capable of taking care to its entirely because the most of the column members are not meshed as we have seen already earlier so to capture the local effects in columns the program uses approximate formula for additional moments as specified in code 39.7.1 so basically the code meant to say here code meant to say here that this formula is for, should be replaced for p delta analysis but this p delta analysis includes both p big delta and p small delta when you are not capable of taking care of the p small delta the local deformation in that case you should take this additional moment with big big delta also okay in case of uh, when you are using etaps and etaps document also says the same okay so if i just show you here in these two columns this column is meshed how to mesh a column you just select this column assign uh, you go to here frame and there is an option called let me just unlock this assign frame uh, i will go to frame auto mesh options and here you can see auto mesh frames and i will i want to uh, you can say mesh the frame suppose into five segments i will give this five and apply so you can see here this column is mesh not mesh so it has only two joints and this column is meshed and it has intermediate five joints so you can see uh, joint interval 5 it is written now if i run the analysis here in this uh, you can say two columns i have applied a vertical load and also horizontal force and i have also defined the p delta uh, load combination for that okay or you can say p delta 
case for that so now if i just show you the deformation suppose the deflected shape i want to show you first or suppose eq my case so you can see here this curvature is going very linearly but if you see this curvature here some intermediate buckling behavior very very minimum though it is in this particular case because the load is very less and the column height is also less but this curvature is not the as linear as it is there are some uh, ups and downs we can see so that means the local buckling behavior is coming into the picture but when we are doing this if you see the moment you can see here the moment is a bit less or than the uh, the column with without uh, this uh, meshing okay so that means it's not always the case that uh, considering the local effect will give you the higher moment okay so this is what we understood here but code has given a uh, conservative approach uh, that when you have a slender column you uh, the code will be calculating you need to calculate the additional moment due to the you can say uh, uh, deflection of the of the column okay and you need to add that with your initial uh, you can say analysis moments right so here what we have seen that uh, you can mesh the column and you can get the local effects on the column uh, by running the pdl analysis or you can you can say run the pdl analysis to take care of the you can say uh, uh, lateral deformation and also you can add the additional moment to get uh, the effect of local uh, buckling or you can say to get the uh, moment due to the local buckling okay obviously it is a conservative approach but we will we always want to uh, be in the conservative side so what i meant to say that if you are defining p delta analysis suppose here i have defined a p delta combination actually you can see here so this is a nonlinear p delta combination okay define load combinations sorry uh, define load cases if i show you here you can see i have this p delta combination okay so uh, here i am running the p delta analysis also and here when i will be designing this column i will select this suppose and i will go to this concrete design preferences so here the additional moment that means the moment due to the slenderness and considering p delta done i will take both i will take p delta also to take care of the uh, global effect p big delta p big delta that means this effect okay and i will also take the additional moment to take care of this effect though it is a bit conservative okay but still i will go for this p small delta so i will add this additional moment also with my p delta analysis so if you see with the code the code meant to say that you need to take both effects but as the software is not capable of taking both the effects pro uh, properly uh, okay so the software has recommended that the software documentation has recommended that with the p big delta effect or big delta analysis you should take the additional moment also in the design as specified in is uh, 456 39.7.1 which we have just seen here you can see 39.7.1 this additional moment so it's that it's not like when you are applying p delta analysis you have to exclude the additional moment you should include the additional moment here because uh, generally uh, columns are not meshed in etaps okay and we do we have to do it uh, you can say uh, uh, manually or you can say by the user it should be done so most of the times we will not do that right most of the times we will will be going with the default uh, you can say mesh of the column so we will not be able to take care of the you can say uh, uh, local buckling of the column or flexural buckling of the column even in most of the cases this flexural buckling will uh, flexural buckling after meshing the column will not give you a governing moment so to be in the conservative side it is recommended that you add the p delta analysis along with that you also add this additional moment as per the codal provision or clause 39.7.1 so 
so both should be taken uh, into the account okay now if you are not performing the pdl analysis this additional moment will come into the picture obviously even if you uh, because every column you have to check otherwise which one is uh, i can say uh, standard column which is not so if you make it on or if you keep it yes that means the uh, software will uh, check uh, the l by d or l by b ratio if it is slender then automatically it will add the calculate the additional moment it will add it with the uh, you can say analysis result and it will give you the final design result right and uh, uh, if you are performing period analysis you do not turn not turn it off you also keep this particular thing uh, on so that both the effects can be uh, taken care right so this is what i have made mistake here actually uh, earlier i have uh, explained it that as code says that uh, additional uh, if you are taking care about the deflection in the analysis then there is no need of adding this additional moments but basically code doesn't meant to say that uh, if you are running this analysis in the ETFs, code is not specific to the any software. So the software, what it is doing, that algorithm I have explained actually today, uh, which was not uh, known to me also. So when I have read this documentation of the software, this documentation you will get in the help menu of ETF actually. All the documents are given. So here it is clearly written how you should take care both the effects, right? So as because code is a uh, general uh, specification so what software is doing with those provisions you have to understand that also uh, this is my bad that i have not uh, read it earlier and i had a misconception so uh, and the same way i have explained in the earlier lecture and i want to correct it i wanted to correct it when i have read it i understood and i want to correct it so i made this lecture i hope you got the clarification now and uh, now i have the documentation also with me to support my uh, to back my statement today right so uh, if any one of you have any uh, you can say doubt regarding this lecture or if you have seen the previous lecture please correct your concept uh, and uh, i i want to apologize again and again as i have given a miss uh, information to all of you uh, which was unintentional okay so thank you um, I hope this video will be uh, helping you out and um, if you want to know how you, you will be you say, implementing PDL analysis in ETABS as per Indian standard code, you can see the previous lectures that I have uh, uploaded in my channel uh, explaining the different methods of uh, you can say uh, uh, implementing PDL analysis as per IS 16700-2017 uh, amendment 1 clause. Okay, so see you in the next lecture. Thank you.